Ms. Sarah Olson is your class speaker. The Provost Selection Committee chose Sarah for this honor from a group of outstanding candidates nominated by the academic programs. A graduate of South Whidbey High School, Sarah found her intellectual passion at Western in the Management Information Systems Program, a discipline which requires both technical skills and also an understanding of organizational needs and business processes. Sarah credits the mentorship of her advisor, uh, uh, decision scientist professor Craig Tyron, for not only helping her navigate the demands of her degree, but showing by example the importance of doing what you love. Sarah has already put her skills to work in two internships, one at the McDonald Insurance Group in Kirkland, and the other at Sterling Life Insurance in Bellingham. There, she was a member of the logistics team leading the adoption of a new software program. She graduates today with a degree in business administration with concentrations in international business and management information systems. Today, she will talk about the importance of putting one's passions first and choosing a path for the future. Please join me in welcoming, in welcoming your class speaker, Sarah Olson. Good morning, everyone, and congratulations to all of my fellow graduates. It has been no small feat to reach this point, and you should be recognized and praised for all your hard work and dedication to make it to this day. Today is your graduation. It is your day to celebrate with family and friends. It is your day to reflect on everything you've been through during your college career. It is your day to be on top of the world, because soon we'll all be moving on, starting the next adventure in our lives. Before our happy life as a college student comes to a close, I would like to reflect on some of the experiences we've shared here during our years at Western. I'll start in the beginning the very first day of classes, freshman year. Some of the best advice I've ever been given came on that first day. I was in orientation along with hundreds of other wide-eyed, excited freshmen, trying to remember which dining hall I was supposed to eat at, where I needed to buy my books, and looking for cute boys. The advice I got that day originally stood out to me as odd advice, but as a somewhat klutzy individual, I made a mental note of it. The advice was simple. Be careful to not trip on the bricks. <laughs> I'm sure many of you heard the same advice and probably soon on afterwards understood why it was given. The bricks that make our campus beautiful can also be obstacles on our way to class. I can't count the number of times I've tripped on one or gotten my shoes soaked by a geyser of rainwater when I stepped on it. It seemed that we had so much to learn during our freshman year. We learned about new subjects, about ourselves, all while trying to be careful to not trip on the bricks. Our sophomore year began with a newfound independence, moving out of the dorms and into our own places. Living in the dorms gave us the freedom to live away from our parents, but the dorms still provided us with some of the amenities of living at home. Our bathrooms were clean for us, and the dining hall served us with three solid meals each day. Moving off campus, we would truly be on our own. Some of us may have struggled with cooking for the first time, or discovering our friends, who would become our roommates, were not the cleanest individuals. I'd have to say one of the biggest struggles was surviving the winter heating bills. I was lucky enough to live in a relatively well-insulated apartment but I had friends who lived in old, run-down houses that stubbornly refused to get warm during the winter. To those of you who have worn your hat, gloves, and winter coat at home while trying to do your homework, you probably lived in one of these drafty houses. With the year under our belts, we did a lot of growing up sophomore year, learning more about which classes we enjoyed and how to bundle up to save money on our heating bills. After surviving the first two years of college, you'd like to think that we'd reach the top of the hill and could begin to coast down. However, that was not the case. I remember getting an email from Western 
early during my junior year, telling me, it's time to declare your major. It felt like such a huge commitment to put in writing that I was going to spend the rest of my college career focusing on one subject. In fact, it felt like I was actually signing the rest of my life away. I reluctantly declared a major, only to decide a few months later I wanted to sign my life away yet a second time to another major. I was never the person who knew exactly what she wanted to do, and I still don't know. Do any of you who've switched majors, had second thoughts, or added another major just for fun? I feel for you. To those of you who have always known what you want to do in life and are doing it, you're beyond incredible, and I only wish I could be more like you. I remember my senior, slash super senior year, was filled with the fears and excitement of graduating, trying to squeeze in as many last minute adventures with friends as possible, and sampling the many fine beers of Boundary Bay. It hasn't been easy to finish those last 400 level classes while battling a seriously contagious case of senioritis, but we did it. We survived all-nighters studying until our brains could process no more. We've met incredible people and made lifelong friends. We've survived snow and ice storms, the never-ending rain, and the famous Bellingham wind, all while still making it to class on time. We've made this an experience of our own and taken lessons from it. At times, it wasn't an easy four, five, or even six years, but we've managed to make it through to the end. Today marks the end of college and the beginning of everything else. Now, many of you may not know what that everything else is, it's okay if you don't know. I want to encourage all of you to think about your passions and go after what will make you complete. I want to urge all of you to be true to yourself. It takes perseverance and guts to go after what you truly want in life. If you aren't sure what that is, continue to explore the world. What is right for you is out there somewhere. During your time exploring, you will probably discover you're beginning a new chapter just like we all did when we started our freshman year. There will be new things we learn about life and ourselves. There will be decisions that need to be made about our path in life. There will be good times and there will be bad. As we leave Western, we are embarking on a new freshman year and we will find that there is a new set of bricks out there waiting to trip us up. When you encounter those bricks, don't let them keep you down. Pick those darn things up and make something of them. Before I conclude, I would like to thank all the parents, family members, friends, professors, and others who have joined us today for today's graduation celebration. Thank you all for supporting our education, our decisions, our finances, and providing us a home-cooked meal when we grow tired of Easy Mac and Top Ramen. While there is only one name on each of our diplomas, we could, have not, we could not have done it without you. To those of you sitting in the grandstands, Thank you all so much for making this day a reality for us. Last, to my fellow graduates, I wish each and every one of you the very best with your future endeavors. Enjoy the day, eat, drink, and be merry. Thank you.